Hey guys, Shannon here. Um, somebody had posted up earlier today um, about uh, the way somebody was tuning their car, um, kind of doing it all at once or versus, you know, uh, doing each individual speaker and then putting it all together. Um, you can do it, you know, all, all together. Um, it's a quick fix. It's a... Uh, you know, it, it's it'll it'll get the job done, but you, there's a lot more to it than that. You you're leaving a lot on the table. Um, as I was explaining in the post, uh, there's a lot of out of band peaks um, that can happen um, that you wouldn't normally see if you're doing, you know, say a mid and tweet together. Um, you can't see how the um, individual speaker reacts and here I'll kind of show you um, for some reason I didn't do before I wasn't planning on doing a video until kind of after um, but I'll kind of show you the screen here and um, kind of point out what what it was and then uh, show you so here's um, my tweet this is after EQ so what this looked like before, you know, it would roll off and then there was a big peak right here. Not necessarily that bad, but it doesn't need to be there. So in that, you know, when we do them each individual at a time, you can see that you can make it that nice smooth curve. And same thing for, uh, let's see, this is the right mid. As you can see right here, um, I had some craziness here, got that flattened out, and couldn't quite get this to be a smooth roll off, but it's got that nice little um, valley here, so when it's all together, they sum up very nicely. And then, let's see, we got uh, the right mid base, and same thing here. Um, this came, this came way out to here and then kind of rolled down this way so I was able to smooth that out uh, after you knock that flat and then uh, let's see let's add the sub in there and the sub was pretty smooth it, don't, it didn't really need much of anything being infinite baffle um, I pulled down like maybe uh, like 25 hertz that's it <laughs> it, uh, it did pretty well and it's got that nice little valley right there so uh, keep in mind when you guys raise and lower the sub, if you can picture this curve, this is this would come up to here, and all of a sudden you have phase issues here. Um, it's no longer correct. So you want to you want to EQ this and get all your phasing done um, on a level that you think it's going to be. Of course, you're going to have fun with it later, but remember what you said it at. And let's see. But yeah, that's that's the whole idea is here, just to get each individual speaker, um, you know, like uh, the mid-range here, uh, a lot of times it could have some spikes and jagged, jagged edges down here. Um, there's really no need for that. Uh, and it kind of messes with the interaction of say the tweeter in this instance here okay so let's see what else we got here so um, let's get rid of these so we can see what's going on and let's see this is the, the same one the right side all of the channels Oops, let's get rid of that. So, this is what I ended up with after I did each individual one, and then I come back and checked it for um, any crossover phase issues. Um, so, let's see my crossover somewhere in here, which that looks pretty good. And then I think my upper crossover is here as you can see that all summed up pretty well 
Um, let's put these back in here. Uh, let's see, right in the So you can see how that, that little pass there flattened out very nicely. And then let's see, let's see, right mid base. And you can see that held on pretty good too. Um, I did, th there's some more tweaking involved, but there's the point is that there's no big hole. Um, I used to have one there, like that was a huge problem in my car, um, getting the mid base and the mid to really play together smoothly. Um, ended up being a little bit of a time alignment issue. I spent a lot of time one day <clears throat> going over, <clears throat> going through that. And um, yeah, I was like, able to fine tune it, playing with phase and then, you know, seeing what, what added to it, what didn't, and then tweaking the time alignment just a little bit and it really filled in that hole. Okay, so let's, let's hop off of these. All right, so a lot of you don't know, <clears throat> but I also have die rack in my car. I use a audio, or a, excuse me, Arc Audio PS8 Pro um, for the EQ, but I also have a standalone die rack only unit. Um, what that does is, um, it, it once you learn how to use it, it's very useful. I will say that, you know, it, it's not a trophy in a box, but it does a lot of stuff that I can't do without some really crazy fancy equipment. And it takes going from no tune, like setting everything flat, to I'm ready to go to a show and probably, if I take my time, hour and a half, <laughs> you know, maybe I'd probably spend more time listening and giving little personal tweaks. Um, you know, like, like wide, wide brush strokes, um, you know, not, not too many individual frequencies. Um, I do check those, but you know, personal problems, like a little, a little more mid bass, uh, you know, a little less highs, just big, big changes like that. So what I thought was interesting, um, this was after that nice curve you just saw, I ran Dirac, which kind of puts everything together. It gives me time alignment for left and right, not individual speakers at left and right. And then kind of works out any kind of all pass filters, uh, just making everything blend. So this is what, this is what I got um, afterwards. Uh, for whatever reason, it always ends up with a big hump around four to 500 Hertz. Um, I've tried different ways of measuring, uh, but it's always there. I, it's expected. And then let's see. What I do is this is this is what this is what I measured um, right after that that all that tweaking I did to get that nice curve. You run Dirac and it gives you this. Well, your goal here is to make that this curve right here look as much like your target curve that you want um you don't want it to do anything crazy no big dips um if you have a phase issue it'll show it right here it'll like whoosh, whoosh, you know big hole as you can see there's really no phase issues at all before Dirac even gets a hold of it now right after i ran it is and I got this so after this um, I go into Dirac and I tweak the curve set my target curve and take care of all those little lumps like that four and five hundred Hertz right here um, little things little tweaks here and there along the way but nothing major. I like to do a lot of this in Dirac because it keeps all the 
you know the phase between each frequency band um it just handles it a lot better it's got this one's a lot higher resolution than the 8x12 uh, i forget the total amount but it's like double or quadruple something like that um and then we got of course this this is the theoretical um let's see that's theoretically what what it's supposed to do um we've actually come pretty close to that uh it's not quite that smooth but it comes out pretty good um pretty impressed with it and then so after all those tweaks i end up with this let me get rid of this other one So all said and done, this is uh, what I'm listening to right now. Um, decided to take a little bit of a break. It was actually pretty cold and windy outside, so it took me forever because every time I do a measurement, the wind would gust and uh, kind of had to start over. Uh, let's see, I, I don't particularly mind this little dip right at 2500. Uh, it's kind of an annoying frequency to me. It really gets to my ears, and it, I'm fine with that. Um, after this curve, I did put a low shelf from about 80 all the way down just to kind of pull this down just a little bit. It was a little thick. Other than that, it's got a nice taper off. The high end all the way out to 20 and then so far you know this sounds really good um it's not i listened to it before dirac um i had it bypassed and i believe i'm not sure i think i think it gets rid of time alignment uh if you bypass it i, I know the newest version of dirac is supposed to um, last time I tried it, it I wasn't it wasn't working for me. Like I couldn't connect to the the unit. Um, I was having some issues there. Um, but it it sounded really good. But this really puts the polish on the turd, so to speak. <laughs> it uh, just just makes everything mesh together. Um, center image is is super tight. There's just it just does nothing wrong. Um, like I said, this puts a little the fine fine polish on it. Um, and then uh, you know I like to make any tweaks in here, like I was saying, because it all just keeps it together. Um, going through this, like right here, this is just something in my car. I it it won't go away. This uh, it's right at like 35 or 36. I, I, don't, I don't know why that does that, but you can see the mid bass transition all the way through. Um, if it detects that it can't do it, it'll show it. It'll, it'll leave it'll leave a, a drop out in there. But uh, yeah, if you got any questions, go ahead and ask. Um, if you like what you see, uh, I'm gonna try to do some more videos as I can. It is winter out now, so, well, almost. But uh, I'm gonna try to do some more as I go. If there's anything specific you wanna see or hear about, uh, let me know, drop, drop something in the comments, and let me know. Thanks, guys.